73 mistakes that everyone makes. Rocket League is one of the hardest games to master. And the problem is today, there's more info out there than ever before. That's why I picked the most viewed clips from the most viewed videos across the channel to make this top tips video just for you today. If you want to rank up faster, watch this before you queue ranked. Okay, first mistake is skipping the basics. Most of you who watch my videos are looking for some shiny thing that's out there that you think you don't know about, but you know, when you figure it out, will solve all your problems. And look, I get it. Finding new stuff and trying new things out is fun, but most of you watching already know what you need to do. I'm talking about warming up. For example, hit the ball around in free play. Practice boring mechanics like dribbles and backward saves instead of flashy ones like ceiling shots and flip resets. Remember this, advanced Rocket League players never skip the basics. The next mistake is going for all or nothing plays. All or nothing play is a mechanic like a ceiling shot, where either you hit it and you get everything or you miss it and you get nothing. Instead, if you have the option to go between the safe and the risky play, the safe play usually works better. For example, this simple bounce dribble clip that you see on screen right now was hit in a grand champ lobby. This idea of focusing on the fundamentals is something we push heavily in my private coaching program, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. That coaching program is expensive. It's the highest tier package we offer. And the truth is it's not for everyone. If you didn't know, I've spent almost all of February and March to put together a completely free version of the program, which is available when this video goes live. Not just that, but another mistake players make, especially when they're getting into this game is not having people to play with. So if you're looking for a place to meet better players, join our new school community called the GCB free for access to community and the free course I just mentioned. Click the first link in the description below to join today because it's completely free and you can leave whenever you want. Another mistake players make is only playing with people worse than them. It's fun to clip on your friends, but if you want to get better, it's best to be the worst one in the lobby. Leaving the kickoff as first man. Basically, the situation here is a lot of time on kickoff, the ball will 50-50 out to the side and your teammate will be the one to scoop it up. What most people do in this situation is just instantly rotate back to corner boost and let their teammate have a 1v1. However, the thing you have to understand in these situations is that if one person completely gets control of the ball after kickoff, there's usually gonna be a play on that really quick. So instead of getting boost, I always recommend you collect pads and follow the play, especially in 2v2, if there's gonna be a shot on net after the 50-50. Just from doing this, I've been able to convert so many goals. So try this at your rank, and I promise you'll pick up free goals every game. Mistake number 21, front post defending. Most people know by now that the back post, or in other words, the post opposite the side of the ball is easier to defend from. As a defender, you can cover in front of your net, you have access to the backboard, and it's generally just much easier to stop an attack. Yet even through the higher ranks, the mistake I catch is even some people who rotate to the back post initially get anxious if the ball's not coming and slowly creep up through the net so that eventually they're just sitting on their front post. If you get to the back post early, if you can do a loop around, grab some boost and get back to back post, but it's better to be sitting back post still than up at your front post with a ton of momentum flying under the ball into your corner. Mistake number 20, not joining my Discord server. All right, no, we're not, we're not gonna actually count that. But if you haven't joined yet, you totally should. I actually run the largest Rocket League Improvement Discord and it's completely free to join. There are tons of teammates in there, training resources and coaches who will help you. Plus you can leave whenever you want. So it kind of is a mistake not to join, but you know, we'll, we'll move on. Number 20, autopiloting in free play. Of course, if your goal is just to warm up, yeah, jump in free play, hit the ball around as fast as you can. But if your goal is to actually train something and improve, it's probably not what 90% of people watching should do. Yes, if you watch the pros train on stream, they're basically just going to be hitting the ball around in free play, but that's because they already know how to do every mechanic. If you're watching right now and your goal is to improve, 
odds are you don't know every mechanic. So just jumping in free play and shutting your brain off is not going to be the best way to improve. Instead, pick a specific mechanic like flicks or wall play, something that you ideally don't know, and focus on that for just five or 10 minutes. But just picking something in specific and actually having a goal in mind will help you get so much more out of your time than just mindlessly free playing. Mistake number 19, positioning like the pros. The worst example of this that I see come up all the time is something I like to call side positioning. At the high levels, pros will often position to the side because they can actually communicate and pass and make a lot of team plays. Yet odds are when you play, you will be solo queuing without voice comms and playing with people who, to be honest, can't be trusted at all to pull off consistent team plays. So if you try to position to the side of your teammates like pros do, one, you'll probably never get the pass, and two, even if you do, it probably won't be a good one. So in general, it's almost always better to just be back behind your teammates. That way you'll be there to cover when they mess up and you'll be able to save your team from loads of free goals. Number 18, moving too close on offense. One of the most common situations you'll find yourself in in Rocket League is being on the attacking half waiting for your teammate to pass the ball. I see too many players get anxious and just continue to drive forward while waiting for the center only for the ball to go over their head. So remember, it's always easier to get a ball in front of you. And most of the time, there's no additional benefit to being closer to that center. It's just going to reduce your reaction time and put yourself in an awkward position if a pass does come. Number 17, throwing possession. The way I like to explain this is that as you rank up, the importance of having ball control goes up. Yet I see so many diamond and champ players get the ball on their half or at midfield when nobody's there and just send the ball into their opponent's corner. This is a bad habit that I think tons of people develop while they're plat and diamond, but if you want to get through champ, you have to kick it. Learn how to control the ball through either bounce dribbling with soft touches or through carries and flicks. If you don't know how to do this, this, I'll have some videos linked on screen where I explain it more. But if you want to get to GC, absolutely stop tossing possession. Number 16. This one builds on the last tip perfectly, and it's taking shots from midfield. The situation here is let's say you get the ball at midfield and your opponents aren't pressuring you and are still on their back or front posts. The mistake that a lot of people make here is going for the shot just because they have it. And if you're shooting the ball from far away all the time, most good defenders are not going to have too much trouble saving it. Instead, you've got to get comfortable moving the ball closer to the net and taking your shot as close as possible every time. Of course, you've got to be able to gauge how much time you have and you need the ball control to be able to move the ball closer to the net without getting too heavy of a touch and just pushing it away. But if you can learn how to control the ball up the field and shoot from closer, you're going to be able to score on them 90% of the time you get the ball. Number 15, leaving your team alone. I see so many players completely leaving the play, driving all the way back to their side of the field to pick up their own corner boost and then return. I think it's because we're more scared of getting scored on than we are at missing a chance to get a goal. But the thing you've got to understand is if you're back on your side of the field, grabbing corner boost while your teammate is centering the ball and you miss an open net, that's just as costly as you conceding a goal because you could have scored one. So unless the play is about to end and you're not needed, never leave your team in a 2v3 or 1v2 just to go grab boost. This basically gives up all pressure on offense, so stick with your team. Number 14, grabbing boost with ball cam off. I see so many players completely shut off ball cam when they want to grab a big boost or pick up pads. The problem here is if the ball redirects or there's a collision or anything happens, you won't know about it until you turn ball cam back on, which in many cases is too late. Instead, if you've got to go get big boost, line yourself up with it, make sure your car is centered, and then simply turn ball cam back on while holding down drive and not turning. I promise the boost won't move. You can just wait until you see your meter go up. This way you'll be ready. Ready if anything happens last second and you'll actually know which way to turn once you grab the big boost number 13 flipping without a destination or during a collision what i found from watching pro gameplay is that some of the best of the best rarely flip while rotating if at all 
but the main reason you don't want to flip is because while you flip your car is stuck in that animation if for example you're flipping across the field and a 50 50 happens and the ball goes the opposite way you're going to be stuck traveling there until the flip finishes and you land back on the ground instead it's almost always better to wait if there's about to be a 50 50 or some sort of direction change with the ball before you flip of course, situations vary, but if you save your flips for only when you're going long distance around the field, you're actually going to be much quicker to the play. And it might sound counterintuitive, but you'll play faster. Number 12, going for every center. The reason being is because in many cases, it's going to be easier for a defender to get to a center than it will for you on offense. You got to remember, the only goal of a defender is to get a touch on the ball when you, as the attacker, basically have to shoot it on net. This is not to mention that the entire field is behind you when you're attacking, and if you don't put it on net, it could bounce off the backboard and go flying back at you. So really be cautious with how many centers you go for, and just because your teammate is spamming take the shot, don't feel like you have to go for every center. Mistake number 11, not closing the gap. If you're ever, say, defending back post and you notice your opponent has the ball on their side of the field or midfield and there's a lot of space between you. The reason it's bad is because this allows your opponent to set up an attack and get away with messing up a dribble or fumbling the ball while they drive it towards your net. Instead, if you ever do have space and you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you want to close the gap between you and your opponent and start shadowing their movements back towards your side of the field. This will, one, allow you to capitalize if they do mess up, but two, it'll allow you to save the ball with their momentum, which gives you more reaction time than if you were just going to try to guess and intercept the ball from your net. Okay, those were the top mistakes you watched in 2023. I'll be sharing 20 more mistakes later on, but because fixing these mistakes takes a lot of time, I want to give you my top nine quick tips that you can immediately implement to win your ranked games. Number one, power slide on all transitions. If you didn't know, holding power slide is the key to maintaining momentum when you land on the ground. But for you more intermediate or higher rank players watching, what you may not know is holding power slide when you transition onto the wall or ceiling is just as useful as when you're landing on the ground. So from now on, whenever you're landing from air to ground or going from ground to wall or even wall to ceiling, hold power slide and you're going to move quicker and maintain more speed everywhere you move around the field. Number two, wave dash kickoffs. No, I'm not talking about wave dashing on your way to the kickoff. I'm talking about wave dashing at the 50-50. The main use case for this is for advanced players in either 1v1 or 2v2. The reason jumping into the 50-50 and holding your dodge so that way you can wave dash instead of just flipping through the kickoff challenge is it allows you to become grounded quicker. I don't know if you know this, but using your second dodge actually momentarily suspends you midair. So if we have two players side by side and one is jumping and front flipping and the other is just jumping, you might think they'll land at the same time, but they actually won't. The person who saves their jump will land quicker, plus then you can wave dash onto the ground for a quicker recovery. Pro tip that I learned from watching Alpha Cap. Normally, you'd want to jump much quicker in order to win a kickoff, but since we're not using our second dodge and we're just trying to recover fast after, save your flip until the last second that you enter the final circle before the kickoff, and you will absolutely crush in 1v1. Number three, supersonic turns. I don't know if you know this, but once you're going supersonic in Rocket League, you actually don't need to do anything to maintain it. In other words, if you're driving in a straight line at supersonic and you keep driving straight, you'll maintain your speed. However, there's one catch to this, and that's if you turn. So if you're traveling supersonic and you need to turn, the most boost efficient way is to tap your turns instead of holding down. This will allow you to maintain supersonic while you turn and not have to use any boost to play faster. Number four, neutral jumps. The neutral jump or empty jump simply means using your second 
dodge without a direction. Now you may commonly do this when you're taking off for like a fast aerial, for example, but what you probably aren't doing, or at least aren't doing enough in your ranked games is using that second jump to move sideways or down. Yes, that's right. If you're jumping off of a wall, for example, and you turn your car upside down before you use your second empty jump, that jump is actually gonna propel you down. If you haven't seen this before, this is how pros recover super quickly on and off walls, on and off the ground, and even on and off the ceiling. Go into free play and practice jumping up to the ceiling and then using both jumps to jump down. Then when you get more comfortable with this, you can practice jumping off the wall and inverting your car to once again, neutral jump down to the ground and get grounded faster. Do this and your recoveries are going to be three times as fast as anyone below Grand Champ. Number five, wave dashing off and back onto walls. If you've seen any amount of my videos or other tutorial maker videos on Rocket League, you probably know by now that you should be wave dashing. Wave dashing might be the easiest recovery mechanic for new players to pull off. But what you might not be doing is using wave dashes, not just back onto the ground, like we talked about earlier, but also when getting onto the walls or even getting onto the ceiling. I was watching pro gameplay and a pro that shocked me when I saw him do this most is Appjack. If you ever watch an Appjack ones game, pay attention to how he uses wave dashes, not just to get off the wall, but actually to jump onto walls. If you've never done this, practice going into free play jumping, then air rolling to expose your wheels to one of the sidewalls and use your wave dash to actually slam onto the wall and get a speed boost. 90% of people, even in Grand Champ, aren't catching up to this yet. So do this and you're going to be ahead of 90% of players for sure. Number six, pre-flips on to surfaces. One of the reasons pros are still getting faster to this day is many of them are learning how to pre-flip balls, that is dodge forward or dodge sideways, way before they actually connect with the ball. For the average player like you and me, that's probably a little above our level. But what you can start learning how to do is pre-flipping on and off surfaces. A semi-pro player named Mizu actually put me onto this while I was at the Spring Major in San Diego last year, where he explained to me that the reason pros are so fast near walls is not just wall dashing, but also because many of them have started to speed flip on and off the walls. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go into free play and drive next to the left wall. If you imagine a ball coming at you, what most players would do is simply drive to the left, climb up the wall, and then use the wall to hit it. But what Mizu explained, instead of just turning and driving up the wall like a normal player would, actually speed flip to the left to sort of pre-flip into the wall. This way, you get a speed boost from the dodge and you can still climb the wall and hit it like normal. Pre-flips like this onto the wall, onto the backboard, and once again, onto the ceiling are how SSLs are playing 10 times faster than even GC1s. Give this a shot in free play and you're gonna be surprised. Number seven, half flips versus quarter flips. Half flips are not like speed flips. A speed flip looks the same every time you do it. Even though there are technically two different ways you can speed flip that I'm not gonna get into here, a successful speed flip looks like this and an unsuccessful speed flip looks like that. There's a clear difference. However, half flips are not so black and white. If you didn't know, you can actually control your ending position on a half flip anywhere from 90 to 180 degrees. If you imagine your left analog stick is a clock. Most players think that the only way to half flip is by dodging down to six and canceling back up to 12. But the truth is you can actually shift your initial dodge off of true north. So say down to five, four, or even almost three on the clock before you cancel back up to turn your half flip into more of a quarter flip. This might seem like I'm picking boring details just to talk about for a YouTube video, which uh, admittedly, I mean, kind of am. But once you start to get above champ, this is like actually useful. If you're ever in a situation where like you have the wall right on your back and you don't really want to half flip fully, instead you want to half flip kind of more to the right or more to the left, this is a great way to do it. So go into free play, put the wall right to your back, say go into one of your corners, and then practice quarter flipping 
into the corner. So that way you land on your back wall and are immediately ready to go drive up the corner. This is just one example of why this is useful, but tactical stuff like this actually matter. Number eight, flying from goal to goal. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of using free play to train air roll, but there's this one drill where basically you fly from goal post to opposite goal post back and forth in free play. And I think this drill is super useful. I first heard about this drill in a car control tutorial from the guide maker Thanovic. But what I think this drill might be even better for than car control is actually training goal line defense. I'm sorry for saying the word defense. Don't click off. I promise this can also help you look cooler in your ranked games. So there's this clip that I saw in my YouTube shorts last week, I think it was, where Appjack was defending Zen on the goal line. And if you haven't seen this clip, I'll think it was Zen. Buck, help me put it on screen. The thing that stands out in this clip is Appjack's insane ability to recover and maintain boost while saving shot after shot on his goal line. As much as I'd wish to be as fast as him, average players like you and me can learn a little bit from this by simply going into free play and once again, flying from goal to goal. If you're like me and have ever been trying to like rotate back to your net and you accidentally drive up your back wall and go flying across the net, this is the drill for you. <laughs> flying from net to net is gonna help you understand how wide the goal is as well as time your air roll to make sure you can transition into and out of the net. Add this to your free play warm-up routine and your recoveries, specifically on defense or after you overcommit on offense, are going to be three times as quick. Number 10, challenge first on defense. I can't tell you how many times this has happened on my road to SSL, but if you are the first person in a ranked lobby and you have a teammate defending behind you on the goal line and let's say the opponent has the ball attacking midair you have to challenge as first map it doesn't matter if it's a full challenge or a drive challenge or even a fake challenge but if you're first to the ball and you're being attacked on with a teammate behind, you've got to pressure their first man. Sitting and waiting for the perfect moment to challenge when you have a teammate behind you costs you twice as much than just challenging or making it look like you're gonna challenge. That way you force a move from the opponent. The worst thing that can possibly happen in 2v2 or 3v3 defense is when your entire team is trying to save a ball together on the goal line. This is what causes double or triple commits. So if you're first, challenge the ball. Okay, you may have heard some of those tips before, but did you know that over the years, the Rocket League community has made a sort of unwritten set of rules? Believe it or not, these are actually important to understand in every rank bracket. So to make sure you're up to date, here are the 17 must know rules in Rocket League. Mistake number one, always cheat up on 2v2 kickoffs. The reason it's better to position close to the kickoff after it happens is because it is a massive advantage to be the first person to get to the ball after kickoff. If you and your opponent both cheat up, it's even. And if you and your opponent both go back for corner boost, it's also even. But if you go back for your corner boost and your opponent cheats up on the kickoff, you're gonna have to play defense for the first play of the game. And if there's one thing I've learned from high rank 2v2 is it's always better to have possession and be the one attacking. Because I would always rather be the first person attacking than the first person defending. When I'm trying to rank up, I always cheat up on 2v2 kickoffs. And if you're solo queuing, you should do the same. Rule number two. Two, nothing good happens in the corners. Corners at the low ranks of Rocket League are sort of like a black hole. Once you get sucked in, you cannot escape. If you enter the corner, your camera is going to be confusing. The ball is going to take all sorts of weird bounces. For a new player, your whole world is just going to turn upside down. But what I've found coaching low rank players is if you can just resist the urge and stay outside the corner, and this goes for offense and defense, you realize not much bad can happen as long as you keep your distance. If you just stay out of the corners and watch from a safe distance, 90% of players at the low ranks completely 
completely eliminate themselves from the play and give you free goals. Stay out of corners, get free MMR. Rule number three, the left goes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's an unspoken rule in Rocket League, doesn't matter where you're playing from. If two players spawn equidistant from the kickoff, the person on the left always goes. If you're playing 2v2, just remember, left goes, and you're going to save yourself from a lot of stupid kickoff goals. Rule number four, you can always drive forward. A mistake I've probably seen over 200 times coaching the low ranks is pushing too close to the play and driving too far forward. I think when new players come to Rocket League, they think this game is like soccer, where it's good to be as close as possible to the opponent's goal. But let me tell you from my almost 4,000 in-game hours, this is not true. In Rocket League, it's much easier to drive forward than it is backward. So for every car length you push up forward, you lose out on a massive amount of coverage in front of you. The rule you need to remember is you can always drive forward. I promise the play will come to you. Rule number five, rotate up and down the field in circles, not straight lines. In real life, the fastest distance between two points is a straight line. But since in Rocket League, we have this thing called boost and this thing called rotations, sometimes the fastest route between two points in Rocket League is actually an arc instead of a straight line. This might sound crazy, but let me just give you an example. Most of the time, when you enter a play in your opponent's corner, let's say into the top right corner, you want to rotate back across your opponent's net and come back from the top left corner instead of coming back exactly where you came from. This is because when you rotate up and down the field in straight lines in Rocket League, you might think you're playing fast, but because you're in a car, you have to constantly stop and start. Not to mention, you're going to be missing out on boost and potentially ramming into your teammates who are trying to go for the ball after you. So trust me on this, rotate up and down the field in arcs as opposed to straight lines. And remember, to always exit the play from the opposite side you entered. I'm not saying you always have to rotate like this, but this is the correct answer to rotations 90% of the time. Rule number six, always hold power slide when you land. The reason pro recoveries are so smooth is because they always tap power slide when they land. So just remember, if you're ever bumped or landing from a wall or landing from an aerial, hold power slide when you land to preserve your momentum as you transition to the ground. And this will make your recoveries three times as fast. Rule number seven is don't quick chat spam your teammates. If you want the quickest way to get people to dislike you, it's to use the quick chat on your own teammates. It might feel good in the moment to what to save your teammate after he missed, but trust me, the only thing that's worse than a 2v1 in Rocket League is a 3v1. So please don't tilt your teammate. He doesn't need your help. Number eight, defend from the side of your net. Because it's easier to cover shots in front of you than ones behind you, 90% of the time, you should be defending from the side of your net. The opposite of this, and the worst way you can defend at the low ranks, is defending from the center inside your net. Your backboard is completely uncovered if you're sitting in the middle of your net. Remember to always defend from the side of your net, and trust me, if you do this right, your net will become literally unscorable for people below diamond. Rule number nine, waiting with a teammate behind you. Since you watch my videos, I know you're somebody that plays Rocket League smart, but a mistake I see some of my viewers make is thinking being passive is the same thing as being smart. Let me explain. If you're defending and the opponents are dribbling on you, let's say you're first in line to go for the ball and you have a teammate back post. As the first man, you have to challenge the ball. The worst thing you can do is wait with a teammate behind you. You see, the more you wait to challenge when somebody is behind you, the more awkward you're rotation becomes and the more space you give to your opponents. So remember, drive challenge, apply some pressure, or at least do something to force the opponent to make a play. Rule number 10, safe mechanics work better at lower ranks. I get it. We all want to be Justin going for aerial redirects, but the truth is safer mechanics are better at the lower ranks. The reason I would tell you to go for safe mechanics is because your recoveries are not as good as Zen's. Yes, Zen can get away with going for crazy double flip resets because he just bounces off the opponent's backboard and he's back post in a second and a half. But unfortunately, your champ two teammate, he's out of the play for at least four seconds after. So unless your recoveries are buttery smooth, stick to safe mechanics that you can actually recover from. And trust me, you're going to see way better results in ranked. Rule number 11, low ranks 
force the ball low. High ranks force the ball high. So when I'm talking about low versus high ranks, I'm generally talking about champ below for low ranks, champ above for high ranks. Just humor me for sake of example. What I'm talking about here is when and how you should challenge for the best results in ranked. Let me start with my bracket, the higher ranks. When I was playing high ranked games with the pro player Rapid, he taught me that it's better to force your opponent to take the ball high at the high ranks. The reason for this is because you never want to let a high ranked player fake you. They then have a completely free one-on-one -on -one and they're probably going to score on your teammate. So high ranks, you want to force your opponent who's air dribbling or going for a flip reset to go above you, ideally taking the ball to the backboard on an air dribble. That way your teammate can get a free backboard clear. However, if you're at the low ranks, I recommend you challenge the opponent early and cover the high option. The reason is because low rank players usually won't fake you. So long as you cover the high option, your opponent is going to be able to clean up any 50-50 or any scenario where they get under you. If you really don't believe me and you want to see what I mean in practice, go to my video called 30 Days Playing with Pros and you'll see examples of this and why it works in ranked. I'm not saying this will always work, but I'm saying most of the time, if you listen to that rule, you will guess the right answer. Rule number 12, rotate back on the weak side. You are rotating back to your side of the field and the opponents are taking the ball into your corner where your teammates defending. Most low rank players make the mistake here of trying to go into their corner. When you rotate this way, you are moving in the direction your opponents are moving in. And if they get by your teammate and you, then that's wide open. Instead, 90% of the time at the low ranks, you wanna rotate back on the weak side. When you rotate back post, on the opposite side of the ball, you're able to cover your entire net in front of you and you make it so the opponents have to come to you to score a goal. I know it's tempting to want to drift towards the ball at all times, but remember, rotate back on the weak side. And if you do this right, defense will become a breeze. Rule number 13, the pass isn't coming. If you're watching below champ three, just assume the pass isn't coming. What is the chance that your teammate sees you and effectively places a good pass? So trust me, if you want to rank up, especially in ranked 2v2. Don't expect him to pass it. Just get behind your teammate because unfortunately the pass isn't coming. Rule number 14, don't boost through supersonic. If you didn't know, you don't actually have to boost to maintain your speed in Rocket League. If you don't believe me, go into free play and you'll find that as long as you hold down drive and you don't turn too aggressively, you can maintain supersonic with zero boost usage. Rule number 15, delay your takeoff as long as possible. A routine mistake I see people make all the way up at the grand champ ranks is taking off for aerials too soon. What I mean by this is new players seem to like to jump the minute the ball goes in the air. Whenever you're going for an aerial, you want to get as close to the play as possible on the ground and then wait till the last possible second until you need to take off. Delaying your takeoff like this will save you so many wasted aerials and allow you to actually change your mind if the ball gets redirected or you decide you need to go back. So remember, delay your takeoff to the last possible second, and you're going to be twice as fast as everybody at the low ranks. Rule number 16, make your first touch away from the opponent. When I was scripting this video, the first thing I wanted to tell you was to stop booming the ball away. But to be honest, I don't even feel good telling you to stop booming the ball because one of the best ways to rank up in like lat and diamond is to just boom the ball. But once you get to like diamond and even champ and grand champ, controlling the ball becomes more important. Otherwise, you're never going to score. And if you want my golden rule for learning how to control the ball better in Rocket League, it's this. Always make your first touch away from the opponent. So for example, instead of getting the ball and slamming it into your opponent's corner, if both you and your opponent are on the left side of the field in a 1v1, you want to make your first touch to the right side across the field away from your opponent before you start attacking. The reason this is so effective is because when you make your first touch away from the opponent, you move the ball through open space one, but you also buy yourself more time to start a dribble or start a carry or a flick or whatever you want to go for. You just get more time to set it up and make sure it works. Rule number 17, the final rule, don't flip during 
collisions. This is a rule I first learned from Wait and Pilkin three or four years ago when I was a champ. And guess what? I was reminded of this rule 12 months ago as a Grand Champ 3 by apparently Jack. So if there's anything close to a golden rule of Rocket League, it's this. Don't flip during collisions. Basically, a collision is any time one or more players are making a play on the ball and it's unclear where the ball is going to go next. So let's say a 50-50 is about to happen. A collision is about to happen on the ball and you don't know whether your teammate's going to win it or it's going to go back to your side of the field. In these situations, it's critical that you don't flip during the collision. The reason is because if you flip before you know where the ball is going to go, you could end up committing your car in a direction for two seconds that's completely opposite the way the play actually goes. Now, it might seem like, oh, if I flip forward and my teammate ends up getting dunked, I can just turn around, right? Well, not really, because the higher rank you get, the more these split seconds add up. And if you're flipping during collisions at Grand Champ 2 or Grand Champ 3, this will be the difference between scoring or getting scored on. So remember, save your flip and always watch the play during collisions. Never flip during collisions. 17 rules down, and you're on your way to becoming the teammate you wish you had. But before you boot up ranked, here are the top 20 most viewed mistakes that I promised you earlier. Mistake number 20, blaming your teammates. You see, for a while now, I've been trying to push to SSL. And a couple months ago, I kept telling myself that the reason I haven't got SSL is because I'm solo queuing, and if only I had good teammates, then I would rank up. Do you think Squishy has trouble getting to SSL? Do you think apparently Jack has issues getting back to top 100 after a season reset? No, because the best players in Rocket League understand this. In order to consistently rank up in Rocket League, you need to be carrying your teammates every rank to prove to the rank system that you are way better. If you're actually a Grand Champ player and you're stuck in Diamond right now, then you should have no problem solo carrying your games. Mistake number 19, bad settings. You need to understand that Rocket League today is completely different than Rocket Rocket League five years ago. So if you want to get to a high rank, you need to have settings that allow you to learn everything that the high ranks can do. Unfortunately, when Rocket League was made back in 2015, I don't think anybody could have expected mechanics to be the way they are today. So if you're stuck using the default controls, you're going to play like a default control player. Mistake number 18, leaving your teammate alone. Chances are, if you're watching this right now in Plat or Diamond, you are not going to rank up if you trust your Plat or Diamond teammate to 1v2 without you. The lower rank you are, the more you need to babysit your solo queue teammate. I don't say this to make fun of anybody. I say this because this is literally how I ranked up when I speed ran unranked to Grand Champ in like five hours. So that means if your solo queue teammate is on offense, you are not on your side of the field picking up corner boost. I'm not saying to double commit, but I'm saying to position safe and cover for your low rank teammate. You're going to thank yourself later. Mistake number 17, going for every center. We've all been in a situation where you're waiting for a center from your teammate and all of a sudden the ball is flying up above the opponent's net. The mistake a lot of low ranks make here is only checking the ball before they decide to go for it. What then happens is because you only looked at the ball, you don't see the defender flying up five seconds ahead of you, clearing the ball, and you end up over committing, landing on the opponent's backboard, and usually conceding a goal. Instead, whenever you're on offense, I only want you to commit for a center if you're 100% confident you can beat the opponent to the ball. Mistake number 16, defending from the front post. You probably have heard that the back post or the post opposite ball side is the best post to defend from. You have more space in front of you to clear the ball and you don't have to save anything awkward behind your car. However, the problem I see a lot of low rank players make, if the play is moving too slow in their corner, low ranks have a tendency to creep up to their front post over time. I want you to build the habit of rotating back post and sticking there until your opponent brings you the ball. Mistake number 15, flying anywhere you can drive. This means if a ball is midair in front of your opponent's net and you're at half field, 
you should not take off from half field. The most boost efficient and fastest play is to cover as much distance on the ground and wait till the last possible second to take off. This is gonna make you faster, it's going to preserve boost, and it's gonna save you from over committing, which as you know, is a massive problem for lower ranks. Mistake number 14, double jump aerialing instead of fast aerialing. You need to understand there's a difference between double jump aerialing and actually fast aerialing. The correct order is not jump, jump, boost. It's technically tilt, jump, tilt. Just remember, double jump aerialing is not the same as fast aerialing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I highly recommend you check out the step-by-step -step tutorial I dropped two weeks ago on the best method to fast aerial consistently. Mistake number 13, straight line rotations. Because we have this thing in Rocket League called boost pads, I know they're a foreign concept to some of us at the lower ranks, straight line rotations are usually slow. Instead, you want to get in the habit of moving up and down the field in long arcs around the boost pads. Not only is this going to be more boost efficient, but generally the flow of rotation in Rocket League follows more of a circle than it does straight lines. Mistake number 12, rushing your corner. Corners. The corners and the backboard might be the most difficult part of the field to learn how to read for new Rocket League players. However, the thing you have to understand about corners is that corners eat time. So what that means is most of the time the ball goes into the corner, you're going to have a few seconds before it reaches any part of the field that might actually become a shot on net. Don't push up into the corner. Don't get sucked in to the black hole that is corners at the low ranks. And if you can just wait back and allow your opponents and your teammate to do whatever low ranks do in the corner, what you'll find is 95% of the time, there was no threat to begin with. Mistake number 11, air rolling the wrong way. A lot of new rank players hear that the pros air roll and they take it as a sign that they need to do 360s or roll their car upside down to get power on their shots. Just remember, like Lightning McQueen, if you want to shoot left, you air roll right. And if you want to shoot right, you air roll left. I'll drop the training pack I use to first learn air roll shots. It's called Air Roll Shots by Yiza, I think. And if you put just 20 or 30 minutes in a day, you'll have basic air roll shots down in less than a week of practice. Mistake number 11, hitting the ball with the roof instead of the nose of your car. You probably realized that the best way to get power is to time your dodge and to hit the ball with the front of your car. When I see low rank players, they stop using the front of their car and resort to just using the roof or the sides when they go for shots. I think this is because sometimes it feels easier to hit the ball with the roof of your car. But the thing you have to understand is when you hit the ball with your roof, you have way less control and way less power than when you connect with the nose or ideally corners of your car. Mistake number nine, not using the backboard. So many low ranked players make the mistake on defense of pushing up into the center of their goal. The problem is you have no access to your backboard. And even for pro players, backboard reads are some of the hardest touches to make in Rocket League. So to save yourself some embarrassing defensive whiffs, listen to me here and position on your backboard instead of in the center of your net on defense. And trust me, it is so much easier to read the ball from up above looking down than it is from down looking up. Number eight, quick chatting your own teammates. I don't know what's happened with Rocket League ranked in the past year or two, but for some reason, whenever I turn quick chat on these days, it's not the opponents that are trash talking me, but my own teammates that are telling me to take the shot after I whiff on offense. So I know you watching are not the type to quick chat your teammate, but for the someone out there who does this, stop it. Mistake number seven, not boosting through contact. A lot of plats and diamonds that I coach do this weird thing with their aerials. Basically, they'll take off really early for the aerial, but they'll float in the air instead of boosting through their shot. While hovering or feathering your boost might be good on like an air dribble or a flip reset, when you're going for an actual aerial shot, all it does is slow you down, waste boost, and keep you stuck in the air longer. Once you're committed, you need to continue to commit. Mistake number three, skipping 
warm-ups. Do you ever have those days, for whatever reason, it just feels like everything is off? If you're not playing Rocket League for four hours a day, how can you expect to get on after a week and have the exact same mechanics you did last week? So instead of slamming my head into the ranked wall, on days where I'm feeling off, I spend an extra 10 minutes doing a shooting training pack or free play until I feel better. And on days where I don't feel good, I just don't even Q ranked. Mistake number two, avoiding 1v1. There's a reason pro players say 1v1 is the fastest way to improve. Now I get it, 1v1 isn't the most fun. But what I will say is if you can play 1v1, not for the rank, but just for the improvement, you're gonna rank up so much faster. 1v1 is also going to highlight your weak points that especially if you're a twos or threes main, you would otherwise never see. Try to play 1v1 every couple times you play Rocket League, and you're gonna see an instant improvement, not just in your mechanics, but actually in your 2v2 and 3v3 play as well. Finally, mistake number one, the worst of them all is bad kickoffs. Almost everything in Rocket League is situational, except for kickoffs. Because unlike all the fancy mechanics, kickoffs are guaranteed to happen every single match. I'm not saying you need to learn how to speed flip kickoff to win in gold, but what I am saying is if you can simply learn how to get a consistent front flip kickoff, you're going to get one or two free goals every single game in ranked up until you get to diamond or champ. Going into the ranked jungle alone can be frustrating, to say the least. Trust me, I tried to do it for years, but to save you some headaches, here are the top six things I wish I knew sooner that you guys replayed most this year. Okay, the first thing I wish I knew was not playing with cold hands. When I made my Playing With Pros series about a year ago, the first time I heard a pro say that they needed to warm up their hands, I thought it was just a joke for why they were missing. Uh, my God, over. Shooting? No. But as I played with more and more, I realized playing with cold hands is not a joke. Every time before I play rank now, I bring a towel over so my hands don't get sweaty while I'm sweating. And if they're cold, I'll rub them together, turn up the heat in my room, or a tip I learned from Wait and Pilkin is literally run them over warm water. Try this if you're feeling off and you might just play twice as fast in your rank games. Lesson number two, monitor settings matter. In 2022, I went to RLCS Worlds and I hosted this like mini 1v1 tournament at G2's box in Dickie's Arena, literally at the venue. Now, while I thought this would just be a fun thing to do for subscribers, and I would clean up some games and be able to joke around while playing, I learned a lesson for the first time. And that's that it is not easy to play Rocket League on console. Call me crazy, but when I played on a console with like 60 FPS and slower speeds, instead of my normal Titan gamer PC, 360 hertz refresh rate and you know, all the rest of it, my mechanics were way worse. Having a slow monitor made me struggle to win games against players at Worlds who literally sat down and told me they were GC1 before we started playing. Truth is, monitor settings matter a lot, and if you can, you want to invest in a high quality monitor and make sure your settings are optimized for performance. The more serious you are about ranking up, the more important this becomes, so I'll drop one of my settings videos on screen to help you optimize those if you haven't yet, but don't sleep on monitor settings. Number seven, stop worrying about cringe strategies. Strategies. Say what you want about bumps being cringe or dribbles or bounce dribbles being cringe. If you're trying to play Rocket League to win, you need to get all this BS about certain mechanics being cringe and certain mechanics being okay out of your head. I'm telling you this because I used to play 1v1 and I would get upset when people started telling me I wouldn't be able to win in chat without going for air dribble bumps. Honestly, I would have progressed so much faster if somebody would have just gave me a green card to go for the moves that I thought were best in game. So that's what I'm doing for you. Stop worrying about cringe strategies. If you're in 1v1, spam air dribble bumps. You will rank up. Rule number eight, don't Q ranked when tired. I'm not your dad, but I promise you nothing good happens in the rank jungle at 2 a.m. Unless you're literally first killer and you wake up at 5 p.m. and go to sleep at noon, not calling shots on first killer, just all Rocket League pros do this. Basically, if you're not a Rocket League pro, don't Q ranked at 2 a.m. The only people that you're gonna find then are sweats and ranked menaces. So save yourself the game, go get some sleep, don't play ranked when you're tired. Mistake number nine, limit ranked sessions. 
I will tell you my rank improved a ton when I started limiting my rank sessions to max 90 minutes. Now there's this term called an ultradian cycle, which I'm not going to pretend like I understand fully, but basically it's science speak for humans can only focus for a certain amount of time. Now for most people, these ultradian cycles of increasing and decreasing focus last about 90 to 110 minutes, which means whether you're studying for a test, whether you're exercising or whether you are sitting at your keyboard, mouth breathing, playing Rocket League, the ideal length for max performance is 90 to 110 minutes maximum before you take a break. So for max ranked results, try limiting how long you queue before either getting off or at the very least taking a break. And you might just win more games without even having to think about it. Finally, the last thing I wish somebody told me, you need to warm up the right way. If you followed my content, you've probably heard me or somebody else tell you that you should warm up before you play. So if you're currently somebody who just loads up free play and starts air dribbling the ball around for your warm up, stop it, listen up, this video is for you. But the problem I think most of us fall into is we cope and we tell ourselves that five minutes of free play air dribbles is our warm up. Coach Luke here to tell you five minutes of free play air dribbles has never and will never be a complete warm up. The truth is you should be warming up the stuff that you use on repeat. I'm talking about recoveries. I'm talking about shooting. I'm talking about wall play, aerials, dribbling, all the fundamentals, you know, the 20% of mechanics that get you 80% of your results. And when you focus on this, your consistency in game and your ability to actually hit shots will skyrocket. We all know that free play is a great warm up if you actually train the right things. But that begs the question, what should I actually train to rank up? I'm glad you asked. Here are the top three free play drills of 2023 you guys loved the most. So kicking it off, drill number five, we're gonna start with the wall ball drill. Now with many of these drills, there are going to be multiple levels to it, but all the wall ball drill is meant to train is your actual power and timing with clearing the ball. Level one of this drill will be simply hitting the ball and volleying it to yourself off the same wall repeatedly. For your first touch, you're not gonna wanna flip, but after that, simply practice pacing back and forth like I am in this clip here, hitting the ball off the wall, letting it bounce once or twice, depending on how hard you hit it, and then striking it back into the same wall with a front flip. This drill is great for practicing your timing and actual power clears, but one key here that I also want you to pay attention to is the actual power slide turn I'm making when I'm rushing back and hitting the ball off the wall. As you get better and better at this, you wanna practice making that 180 power slide turn after you hit the ball off the wall as quick as possible. And this is what's really gonna prepare you for in-game scenarios where you can quickly turn and get power clears in situations that most people won't expect. And then for level two, we're gonna do the same thing, but instead switch walls as we go. So you'll notice every time I hit the ball here, I'm gonna turn my car 270 degrees to the right and then hit it off the next wall to my left. But this one is gonna really ramp up your speed. And if you can get the timing down, clearing these consistently, you can push up to diamond and even champ with just this stuff alone. Moving on to drill number four, I call this one the cornering drill. First off, if you don't know why corners are so important, definitely check out a video I made called the only video you need to rank up. I basically explain why corners are so important in that video, and I've gotten loads of positive feedback on it. So the idea with this cornering drill is you simply want to get on the same side of the field as the ball, use that left command on your D-pad to send it at your net, and practice catching and controlling the ball into your corner. If the shot comes on the ground, simply catch it and take it over to your corner boost. But if it's in the air, you're gonna have to jump and make a backward save trying to move with the ball into your corner. This might not look hard, but trust me, having to drive backwards and having to get the timing down is much harder than it looks. One thing that I wanna highlight is super important to learn is the actual timing of this defensive flip here. When I do this drill, you'll notice that I'm not flipping when I connect with the ball like in the wall ball drill. Instead, I'm often jumping up to meet the ball and hit it to my corner, then flipping after I make contact to move my car towards the ball and chase it down. This is what's gonna allow you to control the ball really quickly and turn defense into offense, which honestly, 90% of people below GC can't do. So practice this drill and not only will you become a brick wall on defense, but you're gonna start scoring so many breakaway goals in your games. 
Number three, backboard clears. One of the most underutilized mechanics I see players skip out on is backboard play. And very few people realize you can actually train it in free play, so that's why we're doing this here. Just like with the cornering drill, we can once again use the left command on our D-pad to shoot the ball at us on defense. But this time, the only difference is I want you to start driving up the back wall before you send the ball at you. For level one of this drill, I want you to practice just meeting the ball and hitting it right after it connects with the backboard. Pro tip here and a mistake I see a lot of players make is you don't want to actually front flip on these clears. The reason being is because if you front flip, your car will likely stick to the wall. And even if you do hit it, you're probably only going to graze it with the hood of your car. Instead, we want to practice using diagonal flips and barrel rolls to generate more power and clear the ball upfield with our nose. Once you get good at that, you can start doing level two of this drill, which is instead of timing the ball and just trying to meet it when it hits the wall, jump off, air roll, and try to flip into the ball before it connects with the wall. Watch my controller overlay if you need help on that here, but being able to jump off the wall and meet it before it comes will become super useful, especially if the ball is shot on that or it's going to fall before it gets to your backboard. Finally, the last level of this drill that you can practice is the sort of catch into carry drill. This is the hardest variation of them all, but once you get to around low to mid champ, it's going to be super useful to learn. Reason being is because as you rank up, players are going to start to anticipate you clearing the ball. So if you can learn how to get a soft touch off the backboard and then jump off and clear it, you'll be able to fake people out and relieve pressure so much better than if you always just go for the booming clear. The key with the catch into the clear is to make Make sure that you're catching the ball on the nose of your car as it connects with the wall. But even if you can just get level one and level two of this drill down, you're gonna have better defense than people one or even two ranks above you. Okay, now you've got all the tips, mistakes, and drills you could possibly need for the new year. But one thing that you need to remember is that this game is always evolving. To make sure you don't get left behind in 2024, here were the top six mechanics discussed on the channel that are going to be the meta in 2024. Mechanic number four, the wall dash. I know what you're thinking, Luke, wall dashes are just for the pros. And I thought the same thing until I started seeing champs wall dash. So while they look complicated, surprisingly, it only took me, a 21-year-old, pretty uncoordinated Rocket League gamer, about two weeks to be able to wall dash with 80 or 90% consistency. I'll link the wall dash tutorial I learned on screen here. And even if it takes you two or three weeks, listen to me, it's worth it. Anything that makes you play faster in Rocket League, even if it's not meta now, will eventually become the meta. Look at speed flips. Four years ago, it was a new mechanic Musty discovered, and now diamonds are speed flipping. Every time a new mechanic comes out, I see this story repeated again and again. So don't get left behind. Learn wall dashes now so you don't miss out later. Mechanic number five, the zap dash. Zap dashes are one of the newest mechanics to break the pro meta. And since they're so new and little old GC, peak GC3, Luke here doesn't quite have it yet. I asked one of my pro friends, Flitz, who made a tutorial on this to explain it instead. The zap dash is one of the newest mechanics on this list. Popular and named after one's player, Azapatos, who was seen using this in 1v1 show matches. He wasn't the first to do it, but definitely one of the best, hence the name Zapdash. Well, how exactly do you complete a Zapdash? The first thing you want to do is initiate a speed flip with your nose pointed a little bit more towards the ground than normal. As your front two wheels are about to hit the ground, you want to jump at the exact time in order to pop your two front wheels up, then you push forward on your left stick and then press jump again. What this does is this sets your car up in a way in that you're wave dashing forward, gaining a very large amount of momentum very quickly. You can also do the dash part without speed flipping. For example, if you're jumping off the wall or you just did an aerial and you're landing on the ground, you can land perfectly by timing that jump and getting a zap dash off that. The reason this mechanic took off and gained so much popularity is it's a very quick and easy way to gain a lot of momentum without using much boost. And in some instances, the only way to actually reach and stay into the play is by playing a zap dash. In my opinion, this is one of, if not the best mechanics to know and use if you want to be fast and have good recoveries. Bear with me. Thank you, Flitz. I'll have his channel first link down below. All right. And back to my favorite three mechanics in this video. Mechanic number six is dash combos. I was actually watching some AJ gameplay, just taking notes while I was eating dinner. Young Cap, basically here, is going to get a goal if AJ doesn't do something. So watch what he does. He speed flips. And notice how as he's landing, just like Flitz taught us, he's angling his car forward. This allows him to 
pop his wheels up with a zap dash and that tiny speed boost allows him to beat young cap he's comboing a speed flip with a zap dash to get basically superhuman speed here and save a goal that if you don't do that you're literally getting scored on every single time if you want to keep up with the new meta you got to learn how to combo this stuff mechanic number seven ceiling challenges the biggest difference between good rocket league players and great Rocket League players, in my opinion, is defense. These days, anybody in plat and diamond can flip reset, but not every plat or diamond can save a flip reset. That's why I want you to learn defensive mechanics like ceiling challenges. You see, once you get to the high ranks, everybody can do the ceiling shots, the air dribbles, and the double taps, but most of them still aren't used to defenders ceiling challenging. In this clip here, you'll see Zanil ceiling challenge chronic, not one, not two, not three, but four four times in the first two minutes of a rank twos game. If you thought aerial mechanics were the meta, let me tell you, aerial defense is here to stay. Learn how to pre-jump, learn how to use the backboard and walls, and learn how to ceiling challenge, or you're gonna be hard stuck in 2024. Mechanic number eight, empty jumps. Empty jumps are jumps used without a directional input to help you recover faster. If you're on the wall and wanna get to the ground, wave dashing will give you a speed boost on the ground, but sometimes even better, air rolling your car upside down and then using an empty jump to get grounded quicker. You can recover faster than most people below Grand Champ will expect. Number nine, last one is speed flip air dribbles. If you don't know what I'm talking about, speed flip air dribbles are when you use a speed flip mid air to stay close to a ball that you otherwise couldn't. Basically, what I want you to do is go into free play, roll the ball up your backboard, speed flip into the ball to get your first touch. Then you're going to boost after the ball to get a last second, second touch to beat the opposing last man. Speed flip air dribbles are pretty much meta at Grand Champ and will probably be meta for you by the end of 2024. Okay, there was your spook Luke wrapped. If you liked this, comment below. And if you disliked this, also comment below. Subscribe so we can get 500K in 2024.